welcome back and welcome to another movie reviews video uh, as always I will leave timestamps to the different movies that I talk about that you'll have seen in the thumbnail in the description box below so you can go there and have a look at um, a particular movie that you want to hear my thoughts on I did see some more movies this week um, I saw one movie without movie pass and the other movies I saw were with my movie pass and there was only one day I didn't see a movie, so that's quite cool. And there was one day I saw two movies. Hence the not using my movie pass to see the other one. Um, next week on this channel I will have a whole load of um, book versus movie and mo upcoming book to movie adaptation themed videos. So if there's any particular book to movie um, video you would like me to make, any particular book that you would like me to read versus the movie or watch the movie versus the book, uh, let me know in the comments um, because I'm always up for suggestions as to what you would like to see. Uh, so the first movie I saw was a rewatch uh, and it was Won't You Be My Neighbour. I talked about this in another video I made so I will link that up here. Um, the second movie I saw was also a rewatch but I haven't talked about it on here yet. Um, I went to see Solo again. I know that it has received a lot of criticism but I tell you what after having watched two movies that I did not like last week um, I really enjoyed going to see a film that I knew I would like um, I really enjoy the storyline of this one I think there's um, a lot going on and a lot to follow it doesn't feel like a long film I know it's not as long as the previous one but um, yeah the, the time taken to watch it feels very quick because I was completely absorbed the whole time and if a movie can do that for me then um, that always ranks as good in my books. Um, I really liked seeing the scenes of the Millennium Falcon, I love how awesome Chewbacca is in this one um, and I like the part that Amelia Clark plays. Um, I watched the SNL episode with uh, Donald Glover hosting and really didn't like him, thought he was just like really arrogant and he just rubbed me up the wrong way but he does make a very good Lando because that character is just very arrogant and kind of rubs people up the wrong way. Um, so I liked that part in particular. Um, I wasn't a fan of the new droid. I didn't like Lando's droid at all. Um, so yeah, the kind of outcome that she has didn't really get to me at all because I just didn't like her. I didn't like her parts in the movie. And I thought that the fact that, yeah, she's quite a liberated robot, but this is before we have, we're introduced to R2-D2 and C-3PO and they are, they don't seem to have as much like emotional function as she did. And yet this is before them. So in terms of development of the droids, it just didn't, yeah, I would have liked to have lifted her out. Um, but yeah, I thought all the other characters and all the kind of different and new actors that they had in it, I just really enjoyed it. And as I say, after seeing bad films last week, well not bad films, but the films I didn't enjoy last week, it was just a pleasure to sit in the cinema and know that I was going to enjoy this and to be absorbed for the whole time. I didn't even leave in the middle or anything. Um, yeah, it was, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. And as I say, I think the storyline is just great. I enjoyed watching the development and yeah kept me kept my attention the whole way through I've actually really enjoyed all the films I've seen this week so it's been a really good film watching week yay and I've seen quite different films as well so what you need be my neighbor is obviously a documentary solo is like a Disney space adventure film um, and then another documentary I watched on Tuesday I went to see Whitney um, I knew I wanted to watch this the minute I sort of heard it was coming really and then when the trailers started appearing I was um, excited to see it from the trailers and I'm not a massive like Whitney Houston fan obviously I've heard of her songs and I can identify them but you know I wasn't anyone who kind of like bought her records and some of the stuff she did was before my time anyway um but 
I just really enjoyed learning about her and the different kind of phases that she had. The film cuts in with um, film clips and pictures from current events. So when she was growing up um, in Newark, uh, they had kind of pictures of the riots there and pictures of other things that were going on in the, in the world. When she first became big, they had film clips and pictures of that. When she was um, in the bodyguard, they had film clips and pictures um, of what was going on in the world then and then kind of like her later career they showed um how she was received in the media and newspaper articles and things like that so it wasn't just let's have clips of Whitney Houston and her family talking about her the other thing that I thought was really good about the film was the fact that you sometimes see these documentaries and they have maybe like oh this was her mother's friend or this was her childhood neighbor or this was her like old old manager or something this film just has everyone connected to her. It's got two of her brothers, two of her sister-in-laws. Uh, it's got Bobby Brown. It's got her mother. It's got her manager. It's got her hairstylist. It's got people from her childhood and people from who worked around her later. Um, and I just love the fact that, yeah, they've obviously done their, done their homework and worked really hard to make sure that they've covered all bases with the film. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot and it was very entertaining. Again, I was wrapped the whole time. I didn't want to leave. Um, then Thursday was the day that I saw two films because I had already bought a ticket for the one that I saw in the evening so I still had a movie pass ticket to use that day because I'd paid out of pocket for the other one. Um, so the film that I saw during the day was Boundaries with Christopher Plummer which is about um, a woman who is quite unique in that she... Um, takes lots of stray animals into her house and she kind of can't say no to things and she can't say no to people um so she is working for her former best friend because she can't say no to her and her house is just overrun with cats and dogs um she, her son is also having problems at school so she's trying to deal with that as a single mother um and then she has set certain boundaries in place when it comes to her father because obviously she has issues saying no. So her father calls her, he's being kicked out of his home, he wants her to come and pick him up. She calls her sister, uh, who is hilarious and is just as kind of unique as her. It's nice seeing people who kind of like don't fit into the norm in films. It's just always good to have something unique and different. Um, so yeah, Christopher Lumber calls her up says will you come and pick me up oh by the way I've got a blood clot in my leg so we can't fly from Washington to Southern California um we're gonna have to drive and also by the way we're gonna have to do it in my Rolls Royce now the father is wanted for a lot of crimes or has previously been wanted for a lot of crimes and he says you know I'm reformed now I literally just want you to help me pick me up take me home and I just want you to like I want to do this have this road trip with you because I'm dying I'm you know I'm not going to be around for much longer um so the son has got kicked out of school by this point so you know a road trip ensues and as you can imagine with somebody with a criminal past like that it doesn't all go to plan um I just I just really enjoyed it it was a real feel feel good film um there are some drugs and quite a lot of bad language involved um but it still feels like wholesome and it's nice to have those kind of three generations of people in the car getting along and seeing how the grandson interacts with his grandfather, seeing how um, the mother, just daughter, grows as a person in her time away from work and time away from her usual life. And of course, there might be some stray dogs and or cats that they pick up along the way, of course. Um, yeah, it was just, I just really enjoyed it. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it was definitely entertaining and definitely heartwarming and feel good and like, yeah, family friendly in, in the way of if, you know, your family had uh, a history, a bit of a colourful history. Um, and it's interesting watching the grandson and how he develops because his grandfather gives him a little bit more freedom 
than uh, yeah what he normally does it's yeah I recommend this one it, it was definitely enjoyable uh, I knew I wanted to see it just when I saw Christopher Plummer was in it really let's face it um, then the one that I paid out of pocket to see because it was a Fathom event so you can't see those with movie pass was 350 days which is another documentary I know like three documentaries this week um, but I love a documentary so it's fine and that was um, the story about pro wrestling life on the road so it had lots of different wrestlers talking about their experience and the reason it's called 350 days is because that is the average time a wrestler spends traveling as a pro wrestler so they basically only have two weeks off and aside from that they are working every single day and they are that work involves performing and then traveling and it could be traveling across state or it could be traveling across country or it could be traveling between america and canada or it could be traveling to puerto rico or japan or the uk um and it's got lots of um ex-professional wrestlers in there including people like uh the million dollar man and um the uh, Bret Hart you know just lots and lots of people and you've got people from like the very beginnings of kind of pro wrestling right up until I think the most modern one was probably Gangrel who was in the brood at the end of the 90s beginning of the noughties um, so you've got lots of kind of footage from those days and then lots of interview footage with these guys talking about you know how lonely it was on the road how, what hard work it was how much before WWE came along and said this is sports entertainment the crowd thought it was real and so the heels were attacked and hated and shot at and things like that so it was really really interesting um I mean I I'm not as into wrestling as I used to be but I definitely used to watch WWE um and so it was interesting to hear it from kind of a, a a light fans point of view um, and then afterwards there was another interview with um, the producer of the film and one of the guys that was part of the film as well he kind of introduces it at the start of the film and then there's an interview with him afterwards which only three of us in the cinema stayed for I'm like I paid for this I'm going to stay and listen and it was interesting because some of the people who were in the film between them like making the film and then launching it it was like released and launched on Thursday some of the people who they'd interviewed had died and so they were talking about you know missing them and stuff and at the end of the film there was a dedication the the, the list of people who had been in the film or connected with working with the film who had died between the making of it and it being released was like it just shows you you know pro wrestlers do have a, a very short lifespan um, and a lot of them do die young which is a shame but it is something that they highlight in the film as well and they're quite open about talking about steroid use and things like that so uh, yeah definitely if you get the chance to watch that even if you're only slightly interested in pro wrestling it can be really interesting to hear them talking about it and then yesterday <laughs> I went to see the Beatles Yellow Submarine which has been um, it's been having kind of a, a limited release. They just restored it in 4K. And so some cinemas have been showing it as like a midnight movie. And some places have been showing it on just one day. Some places have just one showing. I was lucky enough that they had four showings at the cinema that I went to. So I was able to see it at lunchtime, which was good. Um, I hadn't seen it before. I know it's been around for a long time, but I hadn't seen it before. I have seen Across the Universe, which is based on Beatles songs. Um, so I thought it might be a little bit more like that in that there was a story which was tied together with Beatles songs like Mamma Mia is tied together with ABBA songs. I didn't realise it was just kind of like this cartoon and it kind of featured the Beatles as cartoon versions of themselves but aren't voiced by them which I find really odd. I find it odd that yeah they basically, I looked it up afterwards and like yeah they basically didn't want to have anything to do with it so I was like oh that's interesting they do come on at the end uh, which a lot of you have probably already seen it I'm in the minority that I haven't seen it uh, but yeah it involves the opening sequence is really nice because it's like a cartoon version of Liverpool and it has Ringo Starr kind of going, oh, there's nothing to do here on a Saturday night kind of thing. And then um, goes off into this sort of alternate 
universe where there's these villains called the Blue Meanies and they've taken away music and things like that. It's a very, very loose storyline. Um, and yeah, features the Beatles but being voiced by other people and then features the Yellow Submarine that they travel in which has somebody from the universe where the blue meanies are and then there's sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band which is not the beatles but is they look exactly the same so yeah it was just it was really trippy and i, I kind of knew it was going to be like that but i thought there would be more of a storyline and then they'll break into song which is the beatles singing yeah I wouldn't say that I liked it, but I wouldn't say that I disliked it. I'm glad I watched it and now I've seen it. Um, but yeah, the cinema where I saw it had, um, so they have, rather than having ads and things before the movie, they have um, little like TV shows and clips and things um, that are to do with whatever movie you're seeing. So they had clips of when the Beatles came to the US and clips of the cartoon that was made, which again features the Beatles but not their voices. Which is really odd that it was like the Beatles but not the Beatles. But yeah, wouldn't say I liked it, wouldn't say I disliked it. I watched it and I'm glad I've watched it. I probably wouldn't do it again. <laughs> uh, but yeah on the whole I liked everything I saw this week um, so I hope you've enjoyed my uh, reviews as I say let me know in the comments if there's any particular book to movie comparison you would like me to make that I haven't already made I could still possibly fit it in next week if you get comment in quick if not I will do it in an upcoming video uh, this week I will have book versus movie themed videos all week and then I will be back with another film review for you next Sunday um and yeah thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so that my next video lands in your subscription feed and I will see you with movie reviews all week next week and next weekend bye <laughs>